I'd like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. I invite you to take your Bible, come with me if you would, to Ruth chapter 2. As we come into Ruth chapter 2, we see Ruth is now in Bethlehem, Judah, and uh, she is seeking rest, and she is seeking the Kingsman Redeemer. So let's read Ruth chapter 2 and verses 1 through 3. It says, And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's, a mighty man of wealth, of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabitess said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him, in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers, and her hap was to light on a part of a field belonging unto Boaz, who was of the kindred of Elimelech. As we come into this particular chapter, um, there's going to be so many wonderful things that we can learn as we move through this. But I, I guess we want to see here Ruth's wonderful attitude through the midst of all of this. Ruth has been through some very difficult things. She has lost her husband and uh, Naomi is bigger. And Ruth could have sat at home with Naomi and she could have uh, you know, wallowed in the bitterness of Naomi and as a matter of fact, even became bigger herself because she had some very difficult things that she had went through in her own life. You know, they, they could have stayed at home and had a pity party. But I want you to notice as we come into Ruth chapter 2 that Ruth did not allow herself to become bitter, but she went forth to do what she could do. And friends, let me just remind you of this simple truth by way of application. Bitterness is always the wrong way for God's people to go. When you look at the Word of God, you will find out that God has absolutely nothing whatsoever positive to say about this area of bitterness. And through everything that we go through in life, you've heard it said before, but the truth of the matter is we can get bigger or we can get better. We can understand that we can ask the question, God, why are you doing this to me? Or we can ask the question, God, what are you trying to teach me? And understand that God has a lesson for us as we go through the difficulties of life. And Ruth did not allow herself to get bigger. As we come into this chapter, Boaz is introduced to us. And uh, we're going to see that he's introduced as the Kingsman Redeemer. And as we move through this book, we're going to see that he is a wonderful type of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is much that we can learn about Bo about Christ through the life of Boaz. Now, some of the types of Christ in Scripture, uh, such as Moses and David, uh, we see them and we see the flaws of them. And, of course, we know in that that they are not a type of Christ because Christ is one who did no sin, who knew no sin, who in him was no sin. But as we look at the life of Boaz, we're certainly not saying that Boaz is perfect, but there is no blot on his character uh, in this book. And of course, in that as well, he is a wonderful type of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Hebrew word goel is translated kinsman some 13 times in the book of Ruth. And the same word is also translated redeemer or redemption several times in Ruth as well. So as we move through this chapter and the following chapters, uh, we will consider the meaning and the application of these truths of Boaz being the kinsman redeemer. The name Boaz means in him is strength. And uh, as we move through this book, we're going to see Boaz as the Lord of the harvest, as master of servants, as the redeemer, as the bridegroom, and as a life giver. And uh, as we can see through all of those areas, he is a beautiful picture for us of the Lord Jesus Christ. So in the first 16 verses of Ruth chapter 2, we see Ruth gleaning the grain. She goes out into the field to glean the grain to, to, uh, so that her and, and uh, her mother-in-law will have something that they can live off of. And we find as Ruth goes out into this field to to get grain, and we're going to be looking at this in just a moment, That, or, or we'll actually look at it tomorrow. Like it says her hap was. She just happened. No, no, it didn't just happen. In God's providence, she landed in the field of Boaz. And in that field of Boaz, friends, she finds more than grain. She finds grace. 
We know that she comes to this field at the beginning of barley harvest. It says in Ruth 122, So Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabite, her daughter-in-law, with her, which returned out of the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of barley harvest. So this would have been in the spring, perhaps April or May in that area. And uh, we see here that Boaz was a kinsman. It says in, in Ruth 2 verse 1, Naomi had a kinsman of her husband, a mighty man of wealth of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. So we see, first of all, that he was a kinsman. And uh, that simply means that he was one who was able to redeem not only the property, as we're going to see, but what comes with the property, and that is Ruth, the Moabitess. So as a type of Christ, Boaz was one who could redeem. Friends, let me remind you today that Jesus Christ is the only one that can redeem. You cannot redeem yourself. You cannot save yourself. There are some in our world today who believe that through their good works or through their baptism, through their confirmation, through their church membership, through whatever it is, there's a number of different avenues that people look at, but it's always through their works that they believe that they are capable of redeeming themselves, that they will be at the place, that they will be accepted by God. Friends, that is not the case. If, if that were the case, then why in the world did God the Father send the Lord Jesus Christ into this earth to suffer what he suffered, to bleed and to die in order to bring redemption for mankind? The Bible says in John three sixteen, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Verse 17 says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Christ is our kinsman redeemer. Galatians 4 and verse 4 says, But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, notice in verse 5, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Friends, it's very obvious as we look at this passage that Christ is our kinsman redeemer. Philippians chapter 2, verses 7 and verse 8. Paul is writing and he says of the Lord Jesus Christ, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So we see there that Christ is our kinsman redeemer. That he is the one that suffered and bled and died, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. But not only is uh, Boaz the, the redeemer, the kinsman, but also he was a mighty man. Come back to Ruth chapter 1, and or 2 rather, Ruth chapter 2. And in verse 1, it says this of Boaz. Ruth chapter 2 and verse 1, it says, And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's, a mighty man of wealth. He was a mighty man. You know, what a contrast to the sickly Malon um, that she would have been married to. What a contrast to the sickly Chilion that would have been Naomi's son. He was a mighty man, which is a picture of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me just give you a couple of verses about that and we'll be through today. In John chapter 1 and verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So here we see that Jesus Christ is God, which means he has all the power that God has. The same was in the beginning with God. Now notice his power here in verse 3. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So we see there the awesome power of God that was demonstrated in creation. Come with me, if you would, to Romans chapter 1 and verse 4. We're moving quickly because we're almost out of time. Romans 1 and verse 4 says, And declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. So there we see that it's the resurrection that shows us the awesome power of God. Romans chapter 9 and in verse 5, it says, Whose are the fathers and of whom as pertaining as concerning the flesh Christ came, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. So there we see that the Lord Jesus Christ is so powerful that he is described as being over all. And then in Colossians chapter 2, 
And in verse 9, it says, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So when you see the power of God that is talked about and that is displayed through the scriptures, it tells us that in Christ dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And then in Hebrews chapter 1, and in verse 3, it says, Who be in the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So these are just a few verses that remind us that Boaz was a mighty man and that the Lord Jesus Christ, our kinsman redeemer, is a mighty man as well. As a matter of fact, he is the almighty God. And we can rejoice in the power of our God. There is nothing that is too hard for him. Rejoice in that today as we think about our Boaz in him is strength. Have a great day.